good morning students welcome to our e learning class students today in this video we are going to read about theme 4 that is thinkers beliefs and uh, buildings from book 1 that is ancient indian history and in this chapter or in this theme today we are going to cover the following topics the following topics will be covered in this video topics such as stupa how the stupas are built structure of stupa discovering stupas at various places in india example at amravati and sanchi in ujjain now the sculpture of stupa okay next one stories in the form of i mean stones in the form of story stories in stone symbols of worship and popular traditions so this we will read or we will cover in this video so do watch this video carefully and listen to my lecture students we have seen that uh, buddhist ideas and practices emerged out of process of dialogue with other uh, traditions i repeat the buddhist ideas and practices emerged out of a process of dialogue with other traditions including those of brahmanas jainas etc or brahmin brahmanas jainas and uh, other traditions not all of those ideas and practices were preserved in the text some of these interactions can be seen in the ways in which sacred places came to be identified so at that time there are several sacred places over there from earliest times people tend to regard, regard certain places as what sacred i repeat since ancient times people regarded some of the places in india as what sacred i mean pavitra this includes sites with a special trees i mean how the sacred places were i mean a special trees are there in that area or unique rock cut temples or sites of awe inspiring natural beauty so the sacred places are having some unique features special trees unique rock cut uh, temples or sites of awe inspiring natural beauty etc these sites i repeat these sites with the small shrines s h r i n e s these sites with the small shrines were always attached to them i mean the shrines were attached by small sites okay sometimes these small sites which are attached uh, attached to the sacred places are called what chaityas the small sites of shrines which are attached to the sacred places are called chaityas now what is chaitya what do you mean by chaitya listen students chaitya may also have been derived from the word chaita chaitya the word derived from the word chaita meaning a funeral pyre meaning a funeral pyre p y r e and by extension a funerary mound a funerary mound buddhist literature buddhist literature mentions several chaityas if you read the buddhist literature you will read about several chaityas it also describes places associated with them. it also describes the places associated with the buddha's life these chaityas these chaityas are regarded as i mean uh, related to what buddha's life okay where he was born you know buddha was born at a place called lumbini so where he was born lumbini and where he attained that enlightenment that is bodh gaya near bihar where he gave his first sermon that is what saranath B- born attainment of enlightenment the first sermon saranath and where he attained what nibana i mean that is called nirvana at kushinagara four places i said lumbini bodh gaya saranath and kushinagara so these places are attached attached with the buddhist life or gautam buddha life 
gradually each of this uh, place came to be regarded as a sacred so these places uh, later on regarded as what sacred places of gautam buddha or many sacred places in india today also we know about we know about that uh, or i can say we know that about 200 years after the time of buddha so we came to know these these places after 200 years of the death of gautam buddha earlier we don't know asoka erected a pillar at sarnath you all know that one the famous king mauryan king asoka he erected a pillar at sarnath which uh, tells that uh, once he visited that uh, place so asoka erected a pillar at uh, lumbini to mark the fact that uh, he had visited th- that place now why were stupas built why were stupas were built that is the question so listen student i have said some of the sacred places apart from these sacred place sacred places there are several other sacred places are there in our country india okay see there were other places too that were regarded as sacred this was because the relics of buddha such as his body remains or objects which he used by, which are used by him are buried there so apart from the birthplace of gautam buddha the first i mean uh, attainment enlightenment that place first sermon place and also attainment nirvana apart from these places there are, there are several other places are there in india which are also regarded sacred because the gautam buddha's remains the dead body remains the relics and also the things which are used by him when he was alive are also buried in some places in india that's why those places are also called what sacred and wherever gautam buddha listen students wherever gautam buddha's dead remains are buried and where, uh, that places are regarded as sacred but that places are called mounds m o u n d s mounds so these were mounds known as stupas so what are stupas stupas are nothing but the mounds on the mound they built one uh, i mean architecture so stupas are nothing but they are the mounds that means where gautam buddha's dead remains or the things which are used by him are been buried at different different places in our country india so there are several mounds in our country india the tradition of erecting stupas may have been pre buddhist it is not that uh, it is after during gautam buddha or after the death of gautam buddha only this uh, stupas were erected no it was pre buddhist i mean before the birth of gautam buddha also the erecting stupas that uh, trend was there but they came to be associated with uh, sacred after gautam buddha okay next one the entire stupa came to be a venerated as an emblem of both of the buddha and buddhism so each stupa resembles about buddha and the religion buddhism according to buddhist text known as asoka vadana according to one buddhist text called asoka vadana mentions that after the death of gautam buddha ashoka the ruler actually ashoka also adopted what buddhism he adopted buddhism after the kalinga war okay he adopted non violence earlier he was adopted war violence but after the kalinga war his mind was changed he adopted buddhism and he preached buddhism so ashoka after the death of gautam buddha he distributed his dead remains to the different parts of the country and wherever his dead remains are buried they are called mounds on that they build some architecture which are known as what stupas okay ashoka distributed portions of buddha's relics to every important town and ordered the construction of stupas over them by the second century a number of stupas including those at barhut b a so b h a b h a r h u d barhut sanchi and sarna so these are the three famous places where the stupas are built okay now how were stupas built i mean uh, how were built means they are built with the help of hands only by the workers but uh, the question is who contributed the money in building this uh, stupas very simple kings kings they donated lot of they gave lot of donations apart from kings guilds i am mean a group of 
I mean uh, skilled workers, guilds. Similarly, here he gave here ivory workers, guilds such as ivory workers, kings. They donated money. Even men and women, men and women also donated lot of money. Okay. Next one. Similarly, here you will come to know about the bhikshus and bhikshunis or bhikshunis and bhikshus. Who are they? They are the monks who went on spreading the Buddhism religion. So they also contributed a, what donations to for the building of stupas. So I repeat, how stupas were built? Very simple. Stupas are built at different places such as Bharat, Sachi, Sarnath, Amravati, etc. They are built with the help of donations given by the kings. Okay, kings. Next one, the guild, uh, trade guild people. I mean skilled skilled workers people such as ivory workers. Also, the donations were given by I mean men and women. Also, the donations are given by bhikshus and bhikshunis. Okay, who contributed for this uh, great monuments? Okay. And they are built by the workers. The structure of the stupa. If you want to know the structure of stupa students, please watch this one, this image. So this is the this image shows the structure of stupa. Okay. Now I'll repeat, read this one. The stupa actually, the stupa in Sanskrit it means one heap. Heap. Okay. So okay, stupa is Sanskrit word meaning heap. Originated in a simple semicircular. Semicircular means what? Just like a tomb. Semicircular. Okay. Semicircular mound of earth. Semicircular mound of earth. Later called what? Anda. A N D A. Anda. Gradually it evolved into a more complex structure. Balancing round and square shapes. Above the Anda. Okay. Was the Harmika. On the top of Anda there is what? Harmika. I mean a balcony, harmika means what balcony like structure that represented the abode of the gods. I mean the place of the gods. Abode of the gods, gods means the place of the god. Arising from the harmika, arising from the harmika was a mast. I mean on the top of that uh, harmika there is a mast. Okay, called what? Yasti. Often, okay, surmounted by a, you know, Chatri, I mean you know Chatri, in many temples you have seen Chatri, okay, or umbrella. Around the mound was a railings, around that there will be railing, okay. Separating the sacred place, this railing will separate the sacred place from the secular world. The early stupas at Sanchi and Bharut were plain, the early stupas were plain at Bharut and Sanchi, except for the stone railings which resembled a bamboo or wooden fence and the gateways which were richly carved and installed at the four cardinal points four cardinal means what? four directions north, south, east, east, west worshippers worshippers entered through the eastern gateway remember always the worshippers will go through eastern direction okay worshippers entered through the gateway through the uh, from the eastern direction gateway and walked around the mound. They walked around the Dutch of Pradekshana. Okay. In a clockwise direction. Clockwise. Not anti-clockwise. Clockwise. Uh, I mean clockwise direction. Keeping the mound on the right. Imitating the sun's course through the sky. Later the mound of the stupas came to be elaborately carved. Earlier it was not elaborate. No. Later on the stupas were carved elaborately with uh, nicks and uh, sculptures as in Amravati and uh, uh, Saji ki Dehri I can say Saha Ji ki Dehri at Peshawar in Pakistan so there we have an elaborate for stupa now historians often try to understand the meaning of sculpture I mean, what a sculpture is done uh, around the stupa historians, historians try, try to understand that uh, sculpture by comparing it with the Textual evidence. Okay, historians they try to compare the sculpture which is uh, carved on the mound with the help of what the uh, textual evidence. No symbols of worship. What are the symbols that are meant for worship at that time? Okay, listen, students. Art historians, listen, very, very important. 
not normal student art historians had acquired art historians had to acquire familiarity with the hagiographies if you studied hagiography i mean wrote in the praise of autobiography wrote in the praise of i mean uh, saints religious leaders so historians had acquired familiarity with the uh, hagiographies of the buddha in order to understand buddhist sculpture according to hagiographies the buddha attained enlightenment while meditating under a tree many early sculptures did not show how the buddha in human form many sculptures did not show okay the buddha in human form instead they showed its presence of through symbols so earlier gautam buddha was identified not with human form with some symbols the empty seat one empty seat is there that indicates gautam buddha was sitting over there the empty seat was meant to indicate that the meditation of the buddha that empty seat that empty seat indicates that the gautam buddha was sitting and doing meditation next one and the stupa which was given in textbook 4.15 page or figure was meant to represent the what mahaparinimba mahaparinimba okay was meant to represent what mahaparinimba attainment of enlightenment another frequently used symbol was the wheel one wheel will be there in the sculptures in many places wheel okay what does wheel represents student this is very very important okay one is the empty seat where buddha should sit and do did meditation second symbol is what wheel okay this stood for what first sermon of the buddha the wheel represents the first sermon which is given by gautam buddha okay now delivered by sarnath you know that one next one as is obvious such sculptures cannot be understood literally for instance the tree does not stand what simply for a tree a tree means not simply tree it had some meaning but symbolizes an event in the life of the buddha tree always represents one incident in the life of gautam buddha so trees are not carved i mean as the like when whenever the tree is sculpted on that uh, i mean monument means there is a meaning a tree represents one of the incident one of the event in the life of gautam buddha in order to understand such a symbols i mean what does see tree means what does empty seat means okay to understand this one the symbols historians have to familiarize themselves with the traditions of those who produced these works of art so they have to find out those pe- people who have did this art or did, did this sculpture so they went to meet those sculptures to know the meaning of those symbols who went to whom historians went to those art people okay art historians they went there now popular traditions what are popular traditions other sculptures other sculptures at sanchi were perhaps not directly inspired by buddhist ideas i repeat other sculptures at sanchi were perhaps not directly inspired by buddha or buddhist ideas these include beautiful women swimming beautiful women were swimming from the edge of the gateway in the gateway on the gates sir beautiful women are there the symbols are there they are swimming okay now so swimming from the gateway each gateway there women are there who are swimming i mean images holding on to a tree and they are swimming hold, holding on to a tree similarly according to popular belief this was a women whose touch caused trees according to some beliefs she is the woman who touched the who touched who touched i mean responsible for what the growth of trees or the trees turned what flower trees to flower and bear fruit i mean the women touched a tree the tree gave flowers and from flowers it turned what fruit another motif motif means what symbols m o t i f another motif is that of a women surrounded by lotus women surrounded by lotus okay and also elephants which seems to be sprinkling water you might have seen in many images hindu images that elephants are what the sprinkling the water on some images god or goddesses okay which seems sprinkling water on her as if performing a what abhisheka abhisheka or what um, kans kans i can say 
कॉन्सक्रेशन कॉन्सक्रेशन अभिषेक मिस वॉट इंग्लिश कॉन्सक्रेशन अभिषेक मिस वॉट कॉन्सक्रेशन सो वेमेन सॉरी एलिफेंट स्प्रिंकिंग द वाटर ऑन द वेमेन कॉल अभिषेक सो दीज आर द पॉपुलर ट्रेडिशन वन इज वॉट दट वेम ब्यूटिफुल वुमेन स्विमिंग ऑन द एज ऑफ गेट वे होल्डिंग ए ट्री सिमिलरली वुमेन सराउंडेड बाय द लोटस वुमेन स्टैचूस आर स्प्रिंकल बाय द एलिफेंट वाटर इज स्प्रिंकल बाय द एलिफेंट्स सो दीज आर द सिंबल्स विच आर फाउंड ऑन द स्तूपास और द मॉन्यूमेंट्स ड्यूरिंग दट बुद्धा टाइम ऑन द सांची स्तूपास स्टूडेंट्स वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू यर दट इज डिस्कवरिंग स्तूपा द फेट अमरावती एंड सांची डिस्कवरिंग स्तूपा द फेट अमरावती एंड सांची सो लिस स्टूडेंट सर दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस वन Yes. Listen, students. In 1854, in 1854, Walter Elliot. I repeat, in 1854, Walter Elliot, the Commissioner of Guntur, I mean Andhra Pradesh, the Commissioner of Guntur, Andhra Pradesh, visited Amravati and collected several sculpture panels. and took them to madras at the time madras means what present chennai these came to be called the elliot's marble after him after that of that uh, person those whatever he has taken they are called elliot's marble he also discovered the remains of the western gateway he also discovered the western gateway and came to be, came to the conclusion that uh, the structure at amravati was one of the largest and the most uh, Mag- magnificent buddhist stupas ever built so he discovered the that uh, which, which direction western gateway and he found that it was the mag- magnificent gateway ever built by 1850s or by the 1850s some of the slabs i mean stone slabs stone slabs from amravati had began began to be taken to different places some of the stone slabs were taken to different places from that place from amravati actually amravati is in gujarat another amravati is there in maharashtra that is different so where they have taken to different places the asiatic society of bengal at kolkata the asiatic society at bengal in kolkata for so there some slabs were taken stone slabs to the indian office in madras some were taken to madras and some even to london also so the stone slabs at amravati were taken to kolkata asiatic society madras that is what that indian office and also to london it was not unusual to find these sculptures adorning the gardens of british administrators so wherever these slabs were taken they were not kept in the museums they became the beauty of the british administrators in their garden i repeat these stone slabs were erected in the gardens of the british administrators in their house in fact any new official in the area continued to remove okay sculptures from the site on the grounds that earlier officials had done the same whenever a new british official is coming to india they are doing the same thing they are taking the rock cut slabs taking to london and erecting them in the garden of their house okay one of one of the few men who had a different point of view was an archaeologist named h h cole h h h h h cole he wrote it seems to me it seems to me a suicidal and uh, in defensible in uh, defensible policy to allow the country to be looted of the original works of ancient art he believed that museums should be plaster cast and facsimiles of sculpture whereas the original should remain where they were found that means this uh, h h cole or h h cole he said that we should not take the original pieces from that uh, i mean where the statues or stupas are built if you want to keep anything the similar to that one in the museum he said that better go and take the plaster casts i mean the impressions of that statue so you will get the impression when you take the plaster cast you will get the impression that can be taken to the museums and can be kept there 
and we can write there and he suggested that original specimen should be there where they were built unfortunately cole did not succeed in convincing the authorities about the amaravati i mean h h cole unable to convince about the uh, about uh, convince to the authorities about amaravati although his plea for in setu or in situ preservation was stopped in the case of sachi though he was not successful in preserving amaravati the uh, the stupa the relics or the uh, railings or the stone slabs he unable to control unable to convince the authorities but he was succeeded in convincing the authorities at uh, sachi i mean at sachi he i mean his uh, thinking was appreciated and uh, those british uh, people came to india they took the plaster cast of that one but they have not take, touched the originality of the uh, sachi even still today at sachi you will find uh, all the four pillars are there three are in a good position they are standing and one is what i mean on the ground one is on the ground but they are like that only so they are preserved and the government of india the arcol survey of india was successful in preserving the beauty of sachi okay why did sachi survive while amaravati not because amaravati discovered earlier moreover at the time people have no idea how to preserve them moreover the officers are unable to convince their authorities whereas sachi was discovered later and officers were able to convince the authorities and they are been preserved okay so students this is the end of our today's video we have covered so many topics so you please read the textbook and compare with this video so that you can understand better and in the next video we will come with some other topics till then take care